Today we're making a basketball rebounder backstop. With a couple tools and $30, you can make this. And it's completely rugged. <laughs> and works great. Interested? Here we go. I tested this design out a good bit. I wanted to something that was going to be able to recover 80% or more of the shots from every angle and protect neighbor's lawn and flowers that are this way, landscaping, and just make it so you wouldn't have to retrieve the ball all the time. So I've got this going up here and this frame pivots right here and it's all held together with bungees, both down here in the center, up here and at the angle pivot. But we tried this frame out a good bit to make sure it was going to work for us. This is just three quarter inch PVC pipe with elbows and tees down below. And it's all connected here with these bungees. I wanted to make it so that it was easy to take up and put down, but yet was gonna be durable enough to use all year round. And then these are just screwed in place where there was these tap screws in to hold these plastic pieces. The eyes are here. One, two, three, four. You also have bungee here, one here, connecting these two together along with the post right here at the hinge and another bungee there. This distance here is 40 inches. And you'll see later that the netting that I've chosen to use will certainly cover this. Now, we'll check it out and we'll use it for a while. And if we have to make little wings, I'm going to make the design flexible enough so we can do that. The materials you'll need for this build is some garden fence. I'm using, it just says 40, but it's actually 41 by 25, $15. Two 16 inch long, three quarter inch PVC. Five 40 inch long, three quarter inch PVC. Eight elbow connectors, two T connectors, eight of these bungees, and I'll show you below where you can get those. A couple of bungee cords, they can range anywhere from, this is 26, this is 21, so somewhere around there. Those are just what I happen to have on hand. These are 57 and a half for those. Probably gonna take you four, maybe five, depending on how you cut these lengths of PVC pipe. And in my area, they cost about two, 250 per 10 foot long, three quarter inch PVC pipe. You'll need four inch cable ties. I have a hundred here. You can get it for a couple bucks. And four of these eyes. For the ones I'm using are two inches long. You just have to find ones that match the screws that you're taking out of your backboard. Tools you'll need is that are helpful is a pipe cutter. You could also use a saw, a pair of scissors. Pretty much everybody has a pair of those. These are some flush cutters. They're a couple bucks. You can find them in any craft or even Walmart and that will help cut the cable ties so they're not going to cut anybody. Although not necessary a mallet for tapping these together. I'm doing all friction fit. You could probably glue them in place but I'm going to do them friction fit in case I need to make some adjustments or modifications to the design over a period of time. At this point you'll have three pieces. This is the topper bottom of the two rectangles. For me, that's probably gonna be the bottom piece because that was the piece that was on the grass. And I've made sure that these are all nice and flat before I go further, so they're all tight. Then you assemble this piece here and start with the netting. So I just found out that four inch cable ties by themselves aren't gonna work. So you have to double them up like this and then they'll go around the three quarter inch pipe. Not a big deal. If you really don't want to do that, you can certainly go to an eight inch cable tie or six inch cable tie if you can find them. And that will definitely go around the pipe for only one. But I'm going to use two because that's what I've got. Here's another hint. I've put a cable tie here and a cable tie there to hold it in place so I can cut this accurately. The fact that these are one inch squares also makes this really good because it's easier to measure off and you'll get exact cuts. Here's another hint. I put cable ties on each corner 
before cinching them down and adjusted the net to make sure it's in place. Now you gotta figure out what is gonna be the back in front of your net. I'm gonna use the net being on top as my front, and this is gonna be my back, so you want all the cable ties to face in the back. It's just a little safety slash design criteria. Also, any of the labels, if you don't wanna take them off with acetate, put them in the back like that. So now I'm just gonna finish putting a bunch of cable ties all the way around this. And start with the smaller one first, because that's good practice before you get to this bigger guy over here that's gonna take a little more time and precision. But you can still use the same technique, put it in the corners to straighten it out. Fair question to ask at this point is how many cable ties do you go around? Every two to three inches, every couple inches, as long as you can get these cables tight. I went down into my warehouse of cable ties and I found a bunch of six inch cable ties, some of them clear. I'm gonna use both on this webbing piece. First of all, to see if the black holds up better their long-term in the wind, in the abuse of the basketballs, in the rain, in the sun. So I've got this portion cut out for the bigger net barrier and I've got the zip fasteners or cable ties in each of the corners like I did with the previous one. I might put some in this corner here, we'll see, just to keep it taut. And I think I'm preferring the clear cable ties, got some over here and got the black cable ties over here. The clear cable ties is I think what I'm gonna go for on this bigger one, because I think the look is better, especially with the white tubing. Okay, so I have completed all the ties on this net. I like the six inch clear ties better than the four inch black ties. You can see I did some black ties down here so that I could identify the bottom of the net. This is what it looks like on the other side. Again, it's totally up to you. Facing out is what I'm saying, but I think I'm gonna go this way. I did this end first, then I pulled it taut and did this end. And then I put a couple here, tightened it up, ran a bunch of ties down here. Now I have a gap here because I'm not, haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to put the bungee that goes around the post either inside here or wrapped around the outside. I haven't decided that yet. And then I went and did sides. Pretty happy with it. It's really going to hold well, especially when I put it up against the post. Now, it's time to put it in place. Since my lawn is a bit of a slope, I've had to make a groove here in which to put the base of the net. So I just made some of these little loops to put in the ground around the base again to keep it in place. They're just 3 8 inch wire bent around a tube. I think it was a one inch tube. Nothing complicated. You don't have to use this high of a gauge. You just want to have some stakes that you can put in to hold the base in place. Again, though, since you have a groove here, that's gonna also hold it in place, so maybe it's not such a big deal. We'll see. I marked this area below. You, if for some reason you're up against blacktop, you certainly could bungee that off. That's what I did originally. I've used a marker and put the center line so I can line up the post with the center of the net. It's in place good. I've put down the stakes. And then it's just a matter of going up and tying the top in. Here's the screws out of the basketball rim where those plastic protectors were, and that's what I'm tying into. They're about the same screw configuration, but there's this extra distance here because there's a gap between where this bottoms out into the mount and the hole at the end. And so that's why I'm using one that's two inches long. This guy was being a little challenging, so I just took some Teflon tape and wrapped it around the threads so that it will go in there nice and snug. The rest of these I didn't have a problem with. So you hand feed it in there. Yeah, it's a lot tighter now. Good. Get it as tight as you can and then just push it one more time and if you have to you can use a screwdriver just to get it. We'll bring up the panel and put it in place. On these bungees the hooks were a lot wider, so I just took a pair of pliers and just clamped them down a little bit so they'll stay better in place. As with the other post, I know where the center of this is. It's right there. 
I'm lining it up and I'm putting two loops around for now just to get this guy in place. And then I'll tighten it up once I have it about where I want it. Now that I have it and it's lined up, I'm gonna bring up the tension so I can bring this fairly close to the backboard. I have to do a little bit of adjusting. It's a little better. There'll be a higher tension in once I bring it up here and adjust it at the post. I wanna point out that I actually come around from the back, start loop around here, and then come around this way twice and lock in here just to keep it in place and that will keep this from moving too much back and forth. So I would do this one first, then this one, then this one, and then the one on the other end. And now it's time to hook it up to the other part of the backstop. I wanted to point out a couple things here. When you're tying these two pieces of pipe together, you're hooking the bungee overneath. And for some reason, if you can't get it through, if you're having problems, just use another bungee and hook it on that way. And then you're hooking it back here and I'll change the view here so you can see. Wear safety glasses. These bungees have nice hooks on them. It's always easier to buy another pair of safety glasses than to try to repair your eyes. So safety glasses is really important when you're putting these bungees in place. This guy, I'm just hooking it up in the back, running around twice, right in line with the pipe there. And that allows the movement and the pivot as I raise and lower the net. If you're never gonna lower the net, then I just would say, keep it up there and you're good to go. Here you can see the back end of that. You can use a pair of pliers or a wrench, bend those guys down so they're nice and safe and they're not gonna pop off. Here's another view, close up of where you go with the center post. And that guy's in there nice and tight. And it's gonna take all sorts of basketball punishment and be up to the challenge. And like any good design, it needs to be tested. So here we go. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you like these kind of builds, check out my channel. I do all sorts of sports, cosplay, pretty much anything that comes to mind and you never know what's gonna show up.